Departing from our home base in Morden, Manitoba, we turn north. The first leg to Gillam is the longest at 514 miles. The second from Gillam to Churchill via York Factory is 255 miles. Our wingtip GoPro mount adhesive let go. We were sure it was a goner. Miraculously, our GoPro is still hanging on. A quick refueling and we're off again. For a different perspective, we've added a 360 camera. All three generating stations are within a 40 kilometer stretch east of Gillam on the Nelson River. Once boasting a peak population of 1,000, Port Nelson at the mouth of the Nelson River on Hudson Bay was intended to be a grain shipping terminal for Western Canada. The port with its 17 span truss bridge leading to a small man-made island was abandoned in 1918 due to a host of problems and called a gigantic blunder. Nearby, at the mouth of the Hayes River, York Factory, built first in 1684, served as a fur trading post for more than 270 years. It was designated a National Historic Site in 1936. The Hudson Bay coastline north towards Churchill. This is a longer video clip to give you a sense of what looked like a desolate land maybe a different planet. No true shoreline, just a mixture of water, silt, sand, and tundra. Here we spotted our first polar bear, alone with a long wait for the bay to freeze. The Ithaca shipwrecked here in a 1960 storm. Later, during low tide, we'll hike out from that rocky point to see it up close. Our first real look at Churchill. That's the mouth of the Churchill River just off our right wing, where the river current and the bay's tide interact each day. The Prince of Wales Fort here across the river from the town. And this is Eskimo Island at the tip of the peninsula. our second polar bear sighting. This is Cape Mary Battery on the Rocky Point at the left. More on that later. The tugboat we'll get a ride on. 
This area along the river's edge is called the flat. We spent considerable time there later with the camera. Churchill Airport was originally built by the U.S. military during the Second World War with permission of the Canadian government. This paved runway is just short of two miles long and it felt like forever till I decided to touch down. Wow, super smooth landing. Up before sunrise, eager to begin another bucket list destination. After Churchill was left basically isolated due to the closure of the port and flooding washed out the rail lines, the community was in desperate need of a boost. In 2017, a massive work of art project named Seawalls Churchill, organized by Winnipeg painter Cal Barteski, brought together 18 artists from around the world to paint large murals and bring hope. As tourists enjoying these creations, we endeavored to record these murals so we could enjoy them for years to come. Hope you enjoy them as well. Here the artist, Pat Perry, tries to tell the truth in what he sees happening to many aspects of humanity. Widely used by the U.S. military during the Second World War, this Curtis C-46 commando cargo plane, better known as Miss Piggy, crashed here in 1979 as a result of engine failure. We'll show you the rest of the murals as we encounter them during our trip. Just a bit bigger than the axle on your family car. The Port of Churchill was built in the late 1920s with a workforce of 1,500 men and began shipping grain in 1931. During a typical four-month shipping season, more than 20 cargo ships requiring 800 boxcars each would visit the port. This tug, named George Kidd, was built in 1960, but at only 600 horsepower was considered underpowered for work with large ocean-going vessels. We were extremely fortunate to meet and be invited along as this tugboat's captain and crew took their boat out for some exercise. The H.M. Wilson at 3,000 horsepower was built in 1986 and especially designed for work in Churchill. It was broken down into several loads and shipped to Churchill on railway flat cars where it was then reassembled. Captain Irvin Swatsky
Fascinating. The line were fresh and salt water meat. Completed in only three days, this painting was meant to draw attention to a universal excuse as well as the precarious balance between humans and nature. In an epic finish, this was painted in less than six hours in steady, drizzling rain using mostly leftover aerosol paint supplies. This masterpiece depicts the delicate balancing act between a fragile life on subarctic terrain and how essential the railway is to the people of Churchill. Hike out to Cape Mary and its cannon battery, which is a stone wall to protect the cannon from enemy fire. It was first constructed in 1744 to complement the defense of Prince of Wales Fort across the river mouth. This lone cannon is one of the original 42 cannons from the Prince of Wales Fort. You can still see the site of the first battery and the remains of a powder magazine which still has the original limestone mortar. The battery was rebuilt in its current location in 1747 and then refurbished in 1959 using modern cement. Feel free to pause the video and read the plaques on this cairn. Oh yeah, it's nice and warm, eh? What an amazing day. Some crumbling buildings from the 1940s. Here the artist uses pieces and fragments trying to express a way to fix what we have destroyed in nature. This mural tries to portray the connection between the spirits of the water, sky and earth. Here the artist used local community members as reference to show how humans walk together facing a great divide. Although not part of the Seawalls mural project, we couldn't help but include this beautiful painting. The youngest artist in the project at 18, Storm, wants to pay homage to the more than 250 species of birds in the Churchill area. No, I'm here. A 400 foot long mural shouts out, don't forget us, even though melting sea ice, blizzards and flooding have brought isolation. Water is life, and this was created to depict the circulation of water in the world, from pump house, to our faucets, to the ocean, plants, and back again.
painted to express the tension between human societies and the natural environment. Flanked by open water on one side and Arctic sea ice on the other, a bear waits. This artist tries to draw attention to the garbage in our ocean waters that threaten sea life. Here, artist Cal Barteski, the coordinator and curator of the Sea Walls Churchill Project, uses the architecture of the polar bear holding facility to paint a larger-than-life image of a bear resting peacefully at sunset. Keeping humans safe in a community built directly on the central migration route of polar bears is a full-time job for Manitoba conservation officers. And yes, we saw a bear with cubs in the wild. We couldn't help but chuckle as tourists arriving at this off-road location in a tundra buggy looked surprised when we pulled up in our Ford SUV. With the tide out, we hiked the nearly half mile to the wreck of the Ithaca. The 80 meter long ship was used primarily to deliver nickel concentrate from Rankin Inlet. During 130 km per hour gale force winds, her rudder fractured and when anchors failed to hold, she ran aground. All 37 men aboard were rescued. It's sunset on day two, and we start by visiting the flat, a photogenic spot for some still photos and video. Then a quick drive back over to Cape Mary for the last seconds of the setting sun. Once again, sleeping past sunrise would be a waste of a good morning. A 
out over Cape Mary to see literally hundreds of beluga whales in the Churchill River. do-it-yourself RV with a raised bed garden. This painting was done as a gift to bear guard Eddie for his long hours guarding Pat at Miss Piggy. Now that is a chain. If there's one more thing that screams Churchill, it's a raised bed community garden with used tundra buggy tires. Not mentioned as part of the Seawalls Churchill project, but we found this container painted by Barteski and friends. We felt fortunate in that the owner of these sled dogs gave us permission to visit them. Boy, did they ever crave attention. Sightseeing and looking for polar bears. Delicious blueberries were plentiful wherever we went. Polar bears can surprise you at any time. Thankfully, we won this one. A natural phenomena called ice pruning executed by ice and snow particles driven by wind. Another project that brought millions of dollars to Churchill was the Rocket Research Range, part of Canadian American Atmosphere Research. Rockets were launched from 1956 to 1984. 3,500 rocket launches took place here. Here, in part two, 
The artist continues to try and draw attention to the fishing debris that threatens our whales. A bonus at the back is a likeness of head of bear security, Dennis Kamper. When you don't have dogs, you have to go with the equally well-known stationary Iditarod race. Another rocket launch pad. This mural is a homage to Camp 10 and the Aboriginal people that were forcibly relocated to Churchill. These golf ball domes were a radar station used to track the rocket launches. hundreds of years to polish these rocks. Okay, are those real bear tracks? These polished rocks were a real highlight for me. Looks like an airbrushed painting. <music> Bringing inflatable paddle boards did not disappoint as on this beautiful late afternoon on Hudson Bay, we embarked on an experience of a lifetime. Oh, that water's cold. Yeah. Oh, there's lots of them. Eh? One, two, three, four, five, six. Four, five, six. Wow. Holy. Oh, there's one right under us here. There's one right behind you. Wow. Holy moly. Unbelievable. You think? Yeah, that I saw coming this time. <laughs> Holy cow. This is, you couldn't, we couldn't be doing this any better. Oh, right under me. Wow. Wow. Holy crap, there's two going that way. Holy. 
We are now surrounded by these things. Oh, he's right under me. He's wearing one right behind you. Wow. <laughs> oh, right behind you. <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh, there's three of them coming right at me. Yowza. Here's one just behind me. Oh my. <laughs> right under me. Wow. Right under me. Tons of tiny flies, but they didn't bite, and honestly, we hardly noticed them. Now he's coming right towards me here. Right here. Here comes one from your from your left hand side. I'm chasing him. I'm chasing him right now. He's coming right towards you. You see him? Wow. Went right under me. Yeah, here's one coming right at me. I think I'm calling. Oh, and then he turns his head sideways to look at Yeah, him. yeah, I've seen that a number of times. Oh, here's one right beside me. Point, point. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm out to do a this thing. Oh, they're still right here. Wow. And here's your sandbar. Yeah. Oh, we're surfing in. How cool is that? Here the artist tries to replicate the memories of wildlife encounters using bold colors to show the impact of those moments. This mural represents the forced journey by a family of bears to find ice during their last winter on earth. Found a nice sunset scene with the half-mast flag flown in honor of residential school students. Normally, this would be the ultimate in photography comfort, but these tiny flies want to get in every crevice. Thankfully, they didn't bite. Our last morning and an overview of Churchill before we depart.
We departed from the gravel runway 25 because of stiff westerly wind. Another polar bear sighting. The beach from which we launched our paddle boards. Some large pods of belugas. Belugas in the Churchill River looking like scattered rice. A watery, barren land. Churchill's Lifeline, the railway from Gillam. Onboard microwave, cheese filled smokies, hot sun, black dash, sealed bag, works just fine. Back home, Morden, Manitoba.